My name is Janet Courtney. I am a speech language pathologist. I've been a therapist for 26 years. I realized that yesterday and went, 26 years? I thought it was 25. No, nope, we're 26 now. Um, I've been doing online therapy for the last nine years. I, um, I'm the owner and founder of C uh, and CEO of Lighthouse Therapy. Uh, we provide online speech, occupational, and behavioral mental health services. Um, and the purpose of this obviously is just in this crazy world that we're in right now, just help you guys, give you the knowledge that I have, um, make sure that you guys can get as much as you can to be able to provide the services that um, you need, that your kids need, they desperately need right now. So I appreciate you coming. Um, Carissa will be helping me out. She's gonna be my co-host today and she'll be answering questions. Please feel free to ask questions um, in the group chat as we go along. If she sees there's something that um, we need to answer right away, we will. Um, otherwise, we will just be answering those questions at the end. The format is 15 minutes, hopefully. I'm a therapist, so I talk a lot, so I'll try not to talk too much and get through the material in 15 minutes, and then um, 15 minutes of Q&A after the presentation. And this is a the beginning. This is the first of a series of six that we're gonna be doing. Um, this pr first one is just getting online. How do we get online? What, what does that look like? And then the next one will be the second one that we'll do, which is next week. And we had to change the time on that one just because I double booked myself. I don't know how I managed to do that, but I did. We'll be at 2.30 next week instead of 1 o'clock. I have a, a presentation that I'm doing for um, NCEA on, at 1 o'clock next week. So um, this one will be at 2.30 next week. And then the rest of them will continue back to the 1 o'clock slot. And I apologize for that. I, we realized that this morning and I was like, oh. Anyway, so there you go. All right, so um, let's get started um, and we will go from there, all right? I'm gonna turn my video off and we will just do the slides for now. All right, so um, let's talk about our options for online services. Obviously, um, there, you have lots of options. Um, this is Zoom, obviously. Everybody knows Zoom, we're in Zoom. The link that we have right here for Zoom is specifically, um, Zoom is giving free access to uh, schools right now during this time. So if you have a school address and you want a Zoom account, you can um, get Zoom and be verified by, through Zoom. So um, that's why we put that one on there. It's not the typical Zoom address, but that's um, the one that we have. You can also use GoToMeeting, Adobe Connect, um, Google Hangouts. I have experience with each one of those and to different levels. And um, you know, it just depends on your preference and what you're comfortable with. So the next thing um, I wanna talk about is what do you need? What equipment are you gonna need to get started online? Obviously the first thing you need is, an, is internet access. And the wonderful thing about our country is people come together when they need, when, when we need help. And I know a lot of internet companies are providing free services to schools and to parents um, that don't have access to internet right now. So, um, so definitely look, uh, look into that through your local uh, provider to see if they're offering uh, families that don't have internet free access to internet. Um, secondly, of course, you're going to need some way to get on the internet, whether that be a computer, an iPad, a Chromebook, a uh, phone. Uh, our, our, our platform specifically uh, supports the Chromebook and the iPad and the phone. I'm not a fan of the phone, but if that is absolutely the only way that child is going to get instruction, then at this point, for this period of time, I would say let them use the phone and go with it and do the best you can. And that's just the way that it is. Um, then, of course, you always, always want to have a headset um, and a way for them to hear you and a way for them to see you. Um, we'll talk more about the office and what it looks like and, and my particular um, camera view in a little bit. And then, of course, you want a keyboard and a mouse. I have a um, wireless keyboard and a wireless mouse, which is great, but you don't have to have that. I want to I want to go just step one back one thing that just crossed my mind with the internet. If you are doing a lot of direct internet and you're going to be doing it for a long time, I really would recommend that you be hardwired. 
That's why we have a, a picture of that ethernet cable right there because it just, if you're using Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi just is not as stable when you're, you're doing audio and video. I've been hardwired for the last nine years because I started out Wi-Fi and it was definitely an issue. So if you have that option to be hardwired, I would really recommend that you get an ethernet cable and just plug it into your computer, even if it's a laptop. Um, a second monitor is not required, but it is really nice when you're when you're teaching children and you're sharing your screen. You can see the kids on one screen and have what you're what you're um, sharing on the other screen, and that's really uh, makes teaching online a little bit easier. So let's talk about the do's and the don'ts of being online. Uh, first of all, first do is do use your sessions for teaching and for uh, concept learning, verifying concepts. You don't wanna, you're not gonna spend your entire time with them doing all the things that you would do in the classroom. You just want them to get the concepts, understand what you're teaching them, and then send them out into their home or wherever they are, most of us are home right now, uh, to follow up on what they would be doing. Do assign activities, obviously, outside of your online sessions. Um, whether that be worksheets that you send home through email or whatever it is, whatever way you would do in your classroom, think about your classroom and the things that you would have going on in your classroom to support what you're trying to teach that concept and find ways to switch that into the online learning or into something that the children can do at home. Um, the third thing to think about is do think about how long your students can attend. Little kids are not gonna attend like they do in, the, in school where you're right in their face. So um, being on a computer now, sometimes when they're playing a game, it seems like they can attend longer, doesn't it? But uh, you definitely want to um, think about how long they're gonna be able to listen to you and attend to instructions that you're doing. Even if it's interactive instruction and you're the best in the world, you still have to be able to think about how long they're gonna be able to sit and attend to your lessons. Um, and you do want to use what you know. Let's not try to reinvent the wheel. Let's try to use what you know, how you know, um, how to provide schooling and those kinds of things. Take that and, and apply it to what you're doing right now. And then use what you have. You don't have to um, create new things. You don't have to um, buy new things. I, I It's crazy, I've been a therapist for like I said, online for nine years, and I have spent very little of my own money on materials because the internet has so many resources and so many free things um, that you can search for and find. But use what you have right now. You don't have to have it perfect the first time. <clears throat> and then lastly, you know how to, you know how to teach. All of, the, all of the people that are here care about kids and we want them to learn. So use your use your skills as a teacher and apply those to what you're going to do uh, and and have the confidence to know that you can do this um i started out when i started out i was i didn't know online i i'm fairly tech savvy uh but it was sink or swim and i figured it out and you can too absolutely uh, now let's talk about the don'ts so don't expect your your sessions to be technically perfect they won't be, they can't be. Right now, the internet has been taxed more than it ever has. The last I heard was there was like a 30% increase last week. So I'm sure it's even higher this week. And I know internet companies are working on infrastructure to try to make sure that they can get that stronger. But right now, um, it's not gonna be technically perfect. So you don't have to worry about your sessions being technically perfect. Um, don't think that you need to have everything immediately. Uh, you can start out with what you have, get online, get practicing, get the kids on there, and then go from there. Don't use your brick and mortar style. This is not brick and mortar. This is not a school. The kids aren't coming there. They're, they're at home. Um, and so having the kids, expecting the kids to be on for, three hours while you teach for three hours in a row. I couldn't do that with, with the same kids. Let's do math, let's do English. Let, no, you can't do that. So try to think outside of the box of the brick and mortar style. Online learning and online teaching is, it's still teaching, but it's a different model than what you're used to in the brick and mortar schools. Um, 
And then don't schedule your, your classes back to back. Give the kids a break. Give yourself a break. You know, the kids are going to miss you. They want to see you, but they also need a break. So try to get, give them a schedule where you're going to give them some activities to do. And then let's come back uh, for another lesson after they've had an opportunity to do those or to have lunch or whatever it else it is, or go outside and play. Think about recess, you know? And then don't forget to limit and remove distractions. Um, it's going to certainly happen. Um, you can't help it. Um, but try to remove as many distractions as you can. Uh, it, it happens. Things happen. But do what you can. Do what you can to remove those distractions. And then <clears throat> lastly, and this seems like um, an intuitive thing, but don't eat while you're working with your students. It's very distracting. So um, don't, schedule your, don't schedule your classes around lunchtime when you're gonna be hungry. So let's talk about those differences between the brick and mortar style and the online education. Uh, of course, we've got scheduling flexibility. Uh, you're not gonna be sitting in front of that computer all day long, so don't plan on having that. Um, use that flexibility for, to your advantage so that you can schedule when the kids can be there and be at their best. If you know your class does better in the mornings and not in the afternoons or vice versa, schedule it that way. Um, modify the work to fit your current circumstances. I, I was talking to a gentleman this morning and he was talking about how, how am I going to get all of my minutes for my kids in for a special education I told him, I said, right now, you're probably not going to. And that's just the way it is. It's not going to be perfect. You'll get better and you'll get more. If this goes on a long time, it will get better. But, there, um, but, but don't be so rigid in that that you think, oh, I've got to get everything in right now. Because you can't. You just can't. Also be flexible with assignment dates. The, um, you know, you, and school, you can say, bring that, bring that assignment back tomorrow. You may not be able to do that, or that child may not have access to it, or that mom may not get in there and get that email until the next day. So give the kids some flexibility and give yourself some flexibility too. Um, follow up on um, discussion boards and um, using your camera, camera on and message boards so that you can get that interaction between the kids um, have them to all turn on their camera and let's do do a conversation where everybody's got an opportunity to participate and then check in with your students not just checking in with how they're doing with school but check in with how they're doing you know we're all stressed out right now so we want to make sure that the kids have an opportunity to um, to tell you how they're doing, you know, those, some kids just, they just need to vent, right? Some, sometimes we just need to vent. And then the other, the last piece is your parents now are there. They're in the, they're in the home. They're there with you. So take advantage of that parent involvement and get them involved, get them into uh, what you, what you're doing and what you expect or, or would like for them to do. And then give your kids some office hours so that, you know, when they have, when they have questions, they can, um, be able to answer those questions. And then I want to talk quickly, I'm going to turn my camera back on because we, I wanted to talk about distractions. Now, I specifically um, did this so that when you look at your office, I, I left my distractions up. Um, I'm in my living room or my family room in my house. So you want to have, try to have a clean background. Now, this is not what I would consider a clean background. Um, because I've got all kinds of stuff going on behind me. So try to give yourself a clean background. If I was teaching with a student and, and this was my space right here, I would definitely put a screen up, even if it's, if, even if it's like a sheet and you put, you know, you put it up, put a, a bar up or something. Um, just make, limit those kinds of things so that the students uh, don't, don't, aren't wondering who is that on that wall or what does she have in, in, in that? out on her deck there. So um, give them that clean background so that they can focus on you. Um, if you're in an office, great, and you just have office stuff behind you and it looks like an office, that's fantastic. But we're not all gonna be in an office setting where it, it can be perfect. So, um, so limit, give the, the kids that clean background. Um, give yourself a comfortable chair and desk space. As much as you can, you're going to be sitting in front of the computer way more than when you were standing in your classroom. So give yourself um, some comfortable space and a quiet space. You want to, be, you want to have uh, limit those distractions as well. Um, if you know that the, uh, the dogs are going to bark at 10 o'clock because the mailman comes every day at 10, 
then don't schedule at 10 o'clock, you know, schedule at 10, 15. That way the barking's done before. Um, have natural or overhead lighting. If you have lighting that's behind you, it's going to wash you completely out. Um, and then let's talk about pets and kids that ha kids happen. They're, they're there with you. Pets happen. They're there with you. It's a part of what's going to happen. I, when, when my dogs would bark in the middle of a session, I'd be like, Oh, let's meet my dog. Introduce the kids so that when that dog goes walking behind the screen on another day, the kids won't be surprised and go, Oh, what is that? And be distracted by that. So, um, it's okay to, um, have them see your pets and, and some of them it's, I, I've even used it as a therapy tool. So, um, and then lastly, dress appropriately. Um, you know, you're still, you're still working, you're still the teacher. So you want to be, uh, dressing appropriately and expect that from your students too. I'll tell you, I've had times where um, I've had kids come in a towel. I've had them come in their underwear. I've had dad walking in the background in a towel from the bathroom. Um, I've had uh, a potty training two-year-old on the potty behind the child. So, you know, stress that to your parents as well. Hey, and I tell the kids, if they come and they're not appropriate dressed, turn your camera off and go get dressed. I, you know, don't turn your camera back on until you're appropriately dressed, so. All right, so that is kind of the basics of getting started and what that looks like. And the next slide we've got for you is um, some resources, where places you can go. Um, these are some of the things that I've already put out on LinkedIn, but I wanted you to have, have these um, right here for you. Um, the, the Department of Ed has also put out some guidelines. There's facts sheets for um, children with disabilities out there. Um, obviously, there's companies that are offering all kinds of free subscriptions for you uh, that you can get to help with that. Um, video conferencing, like I said early on, that Zoom is now free for schools. Um, so use the resources that are available. Poke around on Facebook, poke around on LinkedIn, and see if you can find some of those resources. And also, um, you know, take advantage of whatever, whoever's willing and offering to help. Um, because it certainly is something that um, everybody's, we're all in this together. So, um, and we will be offering um, additional support if you need it. So, uh, give me the next slide, will you? I'm not sure, we, we moved my slides, so yeah. Okay, so if you have questions, now would be the time. So if you have a question that, that I haven't answered about getting online and getting started, or if you need additional information, if you want to just put those in the chat, um, and then Carissa will give me the questions and I will try to answer them and we will try to be done. I told you it was going to be 20 minutes. <laughs> it's 120. So um, I'll give us about 10 minutes to answer those questions. And then I will have um, them put up the additional uh, support link if you are interested in that. So. Um, so, Carissa, do we have any questions right now? Don't have any questions currently. Okay. Does anybody have any questions that they would like for me to answer? Um, you can just chat, you can just put them in the group chat and I will be glad to answer them. I'm going to turn my video back on. Oh, okay. Um, I, I'm seeing them as they come in, so I'll answer them as well. Um, not getting all your minutes. That's the first question I see. Um, the reason I say that right now is because you're just getting started. You're already behind the eight ball, right? Schools, most schools have been closed for at least a week. Maybe some of them aren't. Um, but you're not going to be able to get all of those minutes right now. Don't expect to. Um, as you get more comfortable and get comfortable with getting those minutes, then absolutely try to get them. But I just want you to be flexible and to give yourself some grace. You know, give yourself an opportunity to feel like, okay, I can't get everything right now, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna work towards that. And then um, as you have an opportunity, get those minutes else. You know in the future or, or having an additional classroom, as you get more comfortable and confident in what you're doing, then absolutely you can, you can work on getting um, those minutes. Um, okay. So the next question is, this audio will be sent to us if we had to step away. Yes, absolutely. We are going to be offering 
this webinar um, and all six of the webinars that we're going to be doing on our Facebook page, our, our YouTube page. So, and actually probably I'll put it on my Facebook page as well. Um, so you can have access to it. And then, um, cause we've been recording it and we will record the next ones as well. Um, are most districts attempting to get all IEP minutes virtually? I don't have an answer to that right now. I'll tell you our, our school, I have a 17 year old who's home. Um, I have a, a, a foreign exchange student. Unfortunately, she has to go back. She's leaving tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. Um, so some of them are not providing anything. So I know my school district right now that we live in is not providing any of the minutes right now. Um, so there's directives out there from the Department of Ed. If you're providing school, you have to provide those minutes. Um, if you're not providing school, you don't have to provide those minutes. I don't know how long that's going to last, though, because I don't want, you know, if it, like in Kansas, they've already canceled school for the rest of the school year. So how are those kids going to get their minutes? So I don't know. It can be done virtually. Obviously, we provide those minutes, um, IEP minutes, and um, special education service minutes through virtual schools all the time. So you can definitely provide those minutes. It's just a matter of uh, getting comfortable in this medium and in this style. Um, modifications and parent understanding of those. Well, I'm not quite what you mean. What about modifications? You like mean classroom modifications, um, assignment modifications. You can certainly do those what, how, how you want to do them based on what you do in your classroom is how I would do it online. Um, all the meetings are on Thursdays and um, the one next week will be at 2.30, um, just because I double booked myself. So, and then the one from then on, they'll be at one o'clock. Um, last, the last question I have is, um, what suggestions do you have about engaging your students with limited resource without them spending time in front of their computer screen? Um, things that they have in their class, in their, in their house. Um, if they're if they have reading materials great if they don't you can send stuff that they can print out um, you can get in the kitchen and play around with stuff in the kitchen or have activities that way um, if you have virtual books you can provide them virtual books I know a lot of textbooks have gone virtual so I don't know in your particular situation if you have the virtual textbooks or not um, but that that might be something that your district needs to look into um, okay, let's see, IEP meetings are being held. Yeah, they are being, IEP meetings are held virtually. Um, and most of your IEPs are online. So every place that I've been where I've worked, um, there's a username and a password to get online for your IEP. Uh, so those can be done online. Um, if your IEPs are not online, uh, it might be time for your district to consider getting online. Um, and then they can be held in a Zoom meeting just like this. Uh, we actually, our therapists will go and the, the school, if it's, a, if it's a brick and mortar school, what they've been doing typically is they'll just get the therapist up in the computer and have them online. Um, but you can do the meeting with everybody online. And uh, typically it happens in Zoom. Everybody logs in. Some have to log in from their phone and they're on by phone, but it, you can, and it does, and, and it's effective. Um, minutes that can be tough for all. Yeah, it can be tough for an all day. You're, you're not going to be teaching all day long. You can't, um, you have to get that teaching done in the time that you know that your students are going to be listening and going to be able to focus. And then you're going to have to find ways to modify those assignments. We are going to talk about that in a, in a seminar in one of our webinars later. How do you scale classroom assignments? Um, we have um, Catherine Fugate and um, Caroline Nuttall, who are, um, Catherine's been a special education supervisor or super, uh, director. She's actually with us today. And I think Caroline's with us as well. And Caroline um, has been a director of online learning um, at, uh, her last position was at a director of online learning at A3 California Prep. So we've got other um, professionals with us that are going to uh, answer some of those questions in a way that maybe I can't answer, but definitely um, it can be. And I don't know if I've lost the goals. Did I miss a goal or a question, Krista? Because I got to talking about that one. Um, do we have next, to... 
Go ahead. Yeah, the, next question was, the next question was, do we have to reapply to get into future meetings? Yes, you do. You do. Because I, I didn't want them to just be, um, you know, this one, this one, this one. Um, so we, yeah, you just have to fill out the um, webinar request again to go to the future meeting. That way we really have a good number of the people that really want to come to these. We had 101 and we got about 45 people that came. So um, we want to make sure that we have the room for people as they want to come. Um, and then if virtual instruction is being done by a special education teacher and only special education students are receiving you, the special education teacher, it will be considered special. Yeah, I mean, it would be definitely, that's a special education class, um, SII minutes, so sure. Um, last one, do I have a few suggestions if time? There's oh. the question. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So the, okay. the question, time spent communicating with okay. parents versus time spent communi communicating with students, how should that look? So the time spent um, communicating with parents is how can you get to them? You know, what's the best way? Every parent's going to be different. I'll tell you that too. Um, some students, you'll, moms and moms and dads will be great with email. Um, it's up to you if you want to text or not. You know, if you want to give how much personal information you want to give out, that's up to you. Um, but emails and phone calls are the two primary ways that I communicate with parents. Some parents love texting. You can actually also go and get a Google Voice account. Um, if you want information about that, um, shoot me an email and I can and get you some instructions on getting a Google Voice account so you don't have to give out your personal number. Um, that's what I did for a very long time until I, I started my own business. So um, having a Google Voice account is a great way for parents to be able to call you and not have to call your home landline if you have one anymore or your um, office. So um, yeah, Carolyn, if you wanna if you wanna chime in, um, feel free to turn on your uh, camera or your mic or just your microphone if you want to and ask ask answer that question. That'd be great. Absolutely. Um, can everybody hear me all right? I can. I can okay, hear you. Perfect. I did have a couple of suggestions right here. Uh, Janet, I love the information that you provided. Um, just some suggestions on, given my experience, allow for an extra 10 seconds or so in a response from a student, given mm -hmm. that additional internet lag uh, that could be there. So typically you give maybe 30 seconds or a minute, depending on the question, add an extra 10 to 15 seconds to that. Uh, many of these students who are doing online for the first time, they have so many things in their home that they really want to share with you, the teacher mm -hmm. slash other students. So if there's a possibility of building in a little share time at the beginning or at the end, and that way they can get their kind of excitement of, I get to show you where I live. This is things around me. Um, um, that could be also something a lead on to the next session. Say, next time I would like you to bring some, something that is blue in your house or something that made you smile this morning. And that way they get that little moment of sharing something around them um, and still kind of ties into what you're doing in your online session. Um, be very cautious when you're screen sharing of what else is on your screen, mm -hmm. uh, including pop-ups. If you have yeah. text messaging or emailing that does a little pop-up on your screen, um, as well as any tabs that are open uh, in web browsers and what have you. So just be aware of anything that's on there. What I tend to do is I have a, a separate monitor and I only share that second monitor. So anything that needs to be hidden or not be able to be visible by any students, keep that on a separate monitor. And on that note, I'm going to interject the, um, a lot of the, when you screen share, and that's a great idea. I, I was just going to say, if you didn't say that, definitely put it on the second monitor. But um, also some of them will allow you to just share that application or just share that Chrome tab. So you don't have to share your entire screen so that if you have to switch from that tab to another tab for some reason, the children or whatever's being shared, if you just do, just do that Chrome tab, it will not share what, what, what's on that screen. It'll keep, it'll keep it static on that one screen. So that's another really great thing to do. So. Absolutely. And I love your idea about Google Voice. I personally use a Google Voice number for any business I do with students. Um, some really um, well-built-in tools. It, it can send you emails 
when you miss a phone call where there's a, a voicemail or a text message and you can even forward those along to other uh, professionals, other teachers, what have you, if there's something where a student calls the wrong teacher or if you're needing additional assistance, you can share those messaging. Just be aware that only one phone number can be tied to one email address right. at a time. So mm -hmm. if you're, you're using your work email address, you can only create one Google Voice phone, phone number. Um, Caroline, do you know anything about Dojo? I don't. Um, Jenny, Jenny Hayes asked about Dojo, and I don't know Dojo classes, so um, I can't really answer her question. Yeah, I do not, but I'm, I'm happy to look into it if you'd like me to find more information. Uh, there are a lot of different um, companies and opportunities for using for online classes, and it's great that to see so many of them that are offering them free at this time. Yeah. Um, and then let's see then. Yeah. The, the last question and I'm going to, we're going to stop because we're right at, uh, and I know some people have had to leave because they only had till, um, one is, um, are you going to talk about two screen? I, yeah. Two screens is literally you have two monitors and you will have one and you can tell your computer. I actually own three. I have three monitors and my computer in your settings, you just tell it that this is your first monitor and this is your second monitor and this is your third monitor um, so that it knows and then you can scroll in between and then when you share, when you screen share, it will just share whatever you tell it to share. So if you, like I was talking about, if you have it, you can still put that tab or that, you know, you can have two Chrome uh, windows open. So one will be on your main one and one will be on your second one. My second one is over here, so I keep doing this. But, and then and you can tell it that you just want that that tab on that monitor to be shared and then you'll still see the kids and what's happening here but you can manipulate what they're seeing on their screen share on that second monitor so you don't have to be flipping back and forth I have therapists that that are really great at flipping back and forth and you can you can split screen but I have two 24 inch monitors and one 17 inch monitor. And I'll tell you, it's a, it's a, it, for the amount of money that you're going to spend. And if you're going to be doing this for a while, having a second monitor is heaven. So, all right. Um, and let, okay. So then, um, okay. Lastly, the, um, schedule additional support. This is a link to my calendar. Um, I will be glad to spend 15 minutes with anybody that needs extra time with me. I had somebody today that um, I talked to him this morning. He was he had an ED class in Ohio and was just lost. And so we spent some time talking about ideas and activities for him um, so that he could get the support that he needed and, and, and some recommendations for the school. So um, feel free to um, do that. I'm sorry, I can't answer any more of your questions. If you want to email them to me, I will try to answer them off the computer, but I want to, uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to attend this free webinar. Our next one will be, um, it's don't forget to sign up because obviously you have to sign up, but, um, it will be on from brick to click ready, set, click. And this one specifically is okay. I've done this. I've practiced. What's my first class going to look like? So, um, you can, you can, come and see that one. If someone missed and they want to see it, like I said, this will be shared. And um, I just I just really, really want to be able to help. That's my goal with these is just be able to help you to be successful. So thank you so much for your time. And um, I look forward to seeing some of you next week at 2.30. All right, take care and stay healthy and stay safe.